Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the MedEd page. I'm Dr. Omar Awan. I'm a physician and public health contributor for Forbes.com. This is MSK case 94, a great case. This is a patient that has had back pain, status post trauma. We have a cone down view of the lateral lumbar spine with an arrow pointing at the L4 vertebral body. And the question here is, what's the most likely diagnosis? Is this a case of a vertebral plana, limbus vertebrae, a vertebral fracture, or a Schmerl's node? What's the most likely diagnosis? Well, what we see here is we have this well-corticated ossific fragment adjacent to the anterior superior corner of the L4 vertebral body. This, of course, is a limbus vertebrae. It's certainly not a vertebral plana because that would be, you know, marked flattening and compression of a vertebral body, which we don't see. The vertebral height is maintained. This is not a fracture because this fragment is very well corticated. It's certainly not acute fracture, right? An acute fracture will result in ill-defined margins, right? These are well corticated margins, right? There may be prevertebral or paravertebral soft tissue swelling, which we don't see in this case. And of course, the Schmerl's node usually occurs on the central vertebral body. When you have an indentation or an invagination of the intervertebral disc that goes into the vertebral body, that typically happens centrally, and we don't see that here, right? So the best answer here would be a limbus vertebrae. And what is a limbus vertebrae? And this is important because it can commonly be misdiagnosed as an acute fracture. And to understand what a limbus vertebrae is, we have to understand normal anatomy and normal development. And normally what happens is that you have a ring or a rim apophysis, which is an ossification center that occurs along the anterior superior, the anterior inferior vertebral body that is separate from the vertebral body, but then it fuses with the vertebral body by the age of typically 18 or 20 years of age. But in cases of limbus vertebrae, what ends up happening is, is that the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc herniates between the rim apophysis and the vertebral body that, and it prevents the fusion of the rim apophysis with the vertebral body. And then it becomes separate from the vertebral body, the parent vertebral body. And then this is known as a limbus vertebrae. So this occurs typically, you know, after the age of 18 or 20, when, you know, it should have already fused. So that's what a limbus vertebrae typically is. And this is an ABR favorite. The ABR loves to put this on the core exam. So I want to make sure everyone understands this. And also just for practical purposes, because, you know, when I was an attending, my first case I ever read or my first plain film I ever read as an attending physician was this exact case. Patient came in with back pain, status post MVC. And lo and behold, this was a limbus vertebrae within the lumbar spine. So, you know, this is the findings that we typically see. We often look for a well-corticated triangular defect adjacent to the corners of vertebral body, typically anterior, superior, anterior, inferior aspect of the vertebral body. You know, this most commonly occurs in the lumbar spine, as in the index case, but it can also occur in the cervical spine as the second most common area. Least likely to occur in the thoracic spine, but I've definitely seen cases in the thoracic spine as well. And this is often an incidental finding, usually no symptoms. You know, obviously, in this case, it was back pain, status post MVC, and this is how it presented for me in my first ever case that I read as an attending physician, but oftentimes it's an incidental finding and the patients are often asymptomatic. So thank you so much for paying attention and listening. Please like this video. Please subscribe to the MedEd page. Please support our mission in passing free knowledge out to the whole world. And we'll see you next week for another amazing MSK unknown case.